Right. And uh, let's continue having the discussion in a studio to talk to, you know, you've heard from people who worked with uh, the late Mzemoe during his tenure in office. You've also had, you know, from people who are very close to him in terms of his legacy, in terms of, you know, the positive impact that he brought to the nation. But also, let's get a side of journalists who, you know, worked during Moi's tenure in office and what they learned and probably what Kenyans need to know about the president, his leadership style, his leadership skill, his legacy, and probably what the leadership right now needs to learn from the late Mzimoi. And uh, talking about journalists, I don't know that to call you veterans or <laughs> <laughs> just journalists, <laughs> but I'm joined by Kale Batemi, seated at my immediate left. He's a veteran journalist. Let me use that. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll be one day. You'll be one day. <laughs> and also, Mr. Evans of Fuller, journalist also. Gentlemen, thank you for talking to us this morning. I mean, when we talk about Mze Moya, I'll start with you, Mr. Temi. What do you remember? You know, just the name uh, Mze Moy. Uh, Moy was an interesting uh, leader. His name would actually inspire both uh, love and terror in equal measures. And for journalists, uh, we, we both feared him and loved him. Feared him means that his word was law. Uh, if he coughed, he could end up in jail. But uh, he also had lovely stories. So each time you covered him, you, 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 you assured you'd be on page one. Mm -hmm. So the, the coverage of Moi was reserved for, for specific reporters. Not everyone in the newsroom could cover Moi. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a dramatic leader in terms of uh, storytelling and uh, antiques when it came to public, public mm -hmm. speech. Mm -hmm. yes. So every journalist would, you know, would look forward to writing a story for the name to, be appear, to appear actually on page one? On page one. Mm -hmm. You knew you were privileged to cover the president. All over, I think all over the world, uh, it's not everyone who covers the head of state. So it's, it's a particular a chosen few in the newsroom that uh, are specifically allowed to do so. All right. Yes. And, and, and Mr. Afula, I mean, you know the president. I'm sure you drank Maziwa Yanyayo like I did. <laughs> and I'm sure you know you had those good moments while covering the president. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. First, uh, my condolence to the family and, of course, uh, Kenyans mm -hmm. at large. Uh, importantly about Mo is that uh, apart from just being the president he, uh, and covering him, he was very patriotic. And especially he kept on reminding journalists that to be patriotic at a time when, of course, the influx of the foreign media was very dominant across Africa. And there was a lot of news, uh, I don't know whether I should call it negative, but there was a lot of dominance of the foreign media uh, in news from Africa, and especially Kenya. During his reign, you remember there was a crackdown about uh, the more Kenya and many other things were going on, and he was asserting himself uh, as, a, as a leader across Africa. And he kept on, and he, was ne he never shied. I remember one time during a public rally, he, 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 he really pointed at, at journalists and told them that to be patriotic, mm -hmm. and not withstanding what they report, but they should also put their country first. And that message, I'm sure many, many of us who left there went with that message back to the newsroom, mm -hmm. that your country, is, you put your country first, and then, because there was a competition, I think, a scramble for news between the local journalists and the foreign journalists. Mm -hmm. And we would actually be in the same event, but when you read the newspapers across the, the globe, we are actually reporting something different. So there are those who are reporting. I remember the weekly, weekly, uh, the weekly review was also at that time very, very uh, vocal. And they kept on telling journalists, be patriotic, think about your country. When you write and when you report about Moi, Report about, no, it's about your country. It's not about him as an individual. Mm -hmm. But you also know that the, the consequences. And that's when I think people perceived that the media, the fourth estate, was very uh, instrumental in terms of uh, impo uh, uh, dominate, I mean, influencing the Western countries to mm -hmm. impose sanctions into Kenya. Mm -hmm. And because a lot of people relied on the media. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a message to the journalists that look what you're doing to your country. But let, let me just divert a bit just for a minute. Mm -hmm. And it's good you're saying that, you know, his message to journalists were be patriotic to your country. Whatever you write, think about, put Kenya first. Is that the same thing we're doing right now? Because I mean, Kenyans have been like, the media is too negative. It's just reporting negative stories. Uh, I think you've gone overboard, both as leadership and as media. Number one, more with, more with all his mistakes and weaknesses, he would never have sold the country. But I think the, the moment you sold the country completely, soul, body, and mind, uh, to the West and the East, uh, Moi would have stood and tried to do everything 
to keep, to keep Kenya Kenyan. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, I think we need to learn from the Americans uh, that no matter how bad your country looks, out there you don't paint 90% negativity. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we, we go overboard. Uh, we become like, um, I would say, when you, when, you see, when you see your mother's nakedness, do you broadcast the whole world? I think we, we go beyond that. We, we broadcast more than nakedness. All right. Yes. And, and you know, when, when, I, when I talk to, I, I, I like using this word veteran journalist, <laughs> and uh, when I talk to them, when I interact with them in short, I get to hear them say that the president was a timekeeper such that when your assignment editor sends you to President Moi's function and it's at nine, know that it's at nine. So that when you have that deadline, you know within the newsroom you have a deadline to find your story, you know you'll keep time. Actually, I came to KTN Studios uh, two hours earlier. I remember your colleague telling me you, you must have learned a lot from Moi. Indeed I did, because uh, if you covered Moi's function, I learned to be there two or three hours earlier. Because sometimes it's actually surprise people if this function is supposed to be at 9, he comes at, uh, at 8 or 7.30. So those who are late would find the function is over, or they find the head of state seated. Mm -hmm. So in terms of time management, it was uh, a notch miles ahead of, mm -hmm. of, of, of other leaders. Mm -hmm. And so, Wafula, I mean, for the president to keep time, for him to arrive before time, what lesson as a journalist do, would actually someone learn, you know, in terms of keeping time? If the president himself can keep time, you know? I think uh, Moy had cut himself as a newsmaker. I think everybody will admit that uh, there's no newspaper or would, would carry a story without Moe's story. Then that would actually, you, you know, like scoop. You would have actually missed the scoop. And I think that because there was that, I think journalists had to be there on time. Because uh, if you go before, when, when, you know, it was not like now we have a government spokesperson. I think Moe was also the spokesperson of the government. Because everything that he spoke, was actually, and, and I really enjoyed the time, one o'clock news. Because mm -hmm. in one o'clock news was actually like the, the prime time news. Because either somebody is fired or either somebody has been appointed, but a drastic announcement, I mean a very important announcement would be made at one o'clock. And that, and, and beside press conferences. And I also liked uh, his KICC uh, appearances. I think Moi, if there's any president who went to KICC many times, was Moi. A lot of times, uh, you would actually have, whether it's press conferences, whether it's uh, many activities that he held. I think one because maybe Kanu Edikota was at KICC. But mm -hmm. even a small meeting like the Kanu meeting was very important because everything he, he did there and said there would actually be. And, and I think uh, Kali will agree with me is that uh, nowadays I don't know how we chase scoops, but Moi was actually a newsmaker. And if you don't have Moi on your newspaper, mm -hmm. and remember Kenya Times, that time Kenya Times was there and it was actually a government newspaper, but also I think Standard and Nation and other magazines which were there were really chasing for what Moi would say would actually uh, define the, 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 the editorial for mm -hmm. that particular day. So when you talk about, you know, Mr. Temi, when, when Mr. Fula talks about um, journalists chasing out, you know, mm -hmm. chasing after the president because they knew that President Moi was going to say something really big. Is that the same passion that we have right now? Because, I mean, when we as journalists, we're looking out for what the president is going to say next. We're looking at either corruption or either politics, not something that would build the nation as, the, as President Moi would put it, be patriotic, you know, to your country as a journalist. I think it's important to contextualize that one, when Moi took over power, the world was going through what, what was called the Cold War. And most countries in Africa were under single party leadership. And we had very few media channels. Uh, actually, every, every, every new year, we would keep our ears uh, alert for Moi to define. He, he, used to, he used to issue a theme for every year. We say this is the year of knowledge. This is the year of, uh, of Mandeleo. And the, that's the splash we'd go with. The president has declared the, 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 the year 1997 as the year of development. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, we didn't have other choices. Uh, I think uh, once, you, once you put that in context, it's easier to understand that people like Uhuru Kenyatta, for instance, is in a different era where you have, you have multiple channels of, uh, of media and uh, the, the news uh, values seem to have changed. But uh, that said, Moi himself knew how to make news.
and the new went to issue statements that would actually move uh, and shake the country. All right. And, and, and you know, um, before we get into what probably individually you learned about the president as, as journalist during his tenure, you know, when I look at the, the videos about, you know, the, the videos of President Moe, when he was doing the guard of honor, mm. and everyone loved it because he would take his time and he would do it with a lot of joy. And the way he was walking, he was a man, you know, that power walk. I'm the president. You know, everything about him was, I am the leader. Listen to me. Even when he was doing the guard of honor, when he was walking, when he was moving at, at Kenyans, you know. What, what, what really can you say about that, Mr. Afula? I think uh, Moe, uh, to me, when he was doing the guard of honor, appeared to be a real commander. I mean, he was like a soldier. Because uh, he, 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 he's slow match and, and the way he conducted himself during those uh, military parades was actually fitting like one of them. And, and like not uh, comparing with the other presidents, he's like, I think he really sort of was, and then yeah, he was a sportsman, he was fit. He was able to, 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 to participate in sports and to he enjoy the military. I heard yesterday that uh, he really liked to associate himself with, with, the, with, with, the, with his men in uniform. And I think he really uh, was fitting in well. So I, I think um, uh, that then gave him an advantage. You know, many presidents, I, I think, across Africa created a relationship with their, with their, with their armed forces. And uh, uh, then that also made him, uh, gave him the opportunity to learn and to be able to participate in what they're doing in, as, as if he was one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you know, the president, um had very close friends yes. in, in, in politics and also in, the, in, in different government departments, ministries back then. And um, the people that he worked with, the people that he trusted. And I remember, you know, Lin Jiru, um, uh, the, the, the president's uh, communication manager, saying that when the president trusted you, he really protected you, you know, from any harm, that, from anyone who'd want to harm you. And uh, right now, when you look at journalists, you'll either see a source close to the president said this, said mm -hmm. that. During Moe's time, it was more of, it's either the president said it or he didn't say it. In terms of uh, trust and, uh, and love for those that were loyal to him, uh, I think it's incomparable. Uh, if he trusted you and made you close, there are too many, there are many benefits that were countless that would come, that would come your way and he would stand by you. And that's why Moi, like the, the former Secretary General of Kanu, JJ Kamodo, when he chose to, to stick with Kanu, for instance, uh, in terms of uh, a party, after he left Kadu, he stuck with Kanu until his demise uh, last week. So he believed, he believed, he believed in loyalty. Mm -hmm. And uh, very few leaders today pursue that particular line of, uh, of, of leadership. Loyalty is actually critical in terms of uh, integrity of, a, of an individual. Okay. But just to go back to what Wafula has mentioned, I think Moi was one of, one of the most physically fit heads of states that ever lived. Yeah, because you know, the way he walked. Yes. He used to work out, by the way, uh, regularly, and he, he had a strict diet. And he was a morning, an early riser. I remember one of the books I wrote uh, for the former vice president, Kalonzo Musioka, he, he recalls that uh, at times Moi would uh, chance on his, lead, on, on his ministers, 3 a.m. is up. You knew you were supposed to be up by 6. But by 3 a.m., the head of state is up, dressed in his suit, ready to go. So you can imagine the panic mm -hmm. among the cabinet. Some are still in their pajamas. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of man we, we had is. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I mean, talking about his suit, when I look at his dressing, <laughs> <laughs> he was such a sharp, you know, leader. And taking us to a commercial break here on a KT.